Greetings all, Ben here from East West. Just thought I'd put together a video. I've been looking at a few videos lately, as I do, looking for inspiration um, from one of my favourite channels, Algo Vibes, who did a really nice, neat little video on support and resistance. Um, and I just thought I'd expand on that. So if you haven't seen Algo Vibes' channel before, I'd st I'm not affiliated with him in any way. I don't know him, I'm just a fan. Uh, but I'd advise you to go and have a look at his work if you're interested in programming around your trading and um, Python for finance in general it's a it's a great channel so nonetheless I will put the link to in the description for his video on support and resistance but I thought I'd just take it a step further and do a couple more things so if you want to code along today the first thing you'll need to do if you haven't done it already is you'll need to install plotly that's the charting package I use on Python I just you'll see why when we get to it uh, but if you haven't done it already I've already installed it but you will need to install that module the next thing we need to do is just to import some libraries so we just need pandas uh, why finance for getting some data we need numpy and we're going to import plotly.graph objects as geo so the next thing I'm going to do here is just download some data I'm just going to download the S&P just for the start of this year and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to format the data frame a little bit just so it's a bit more workable. Plotly needs the date set a certain way. Uh, so, And I'm just going to round it off so it's a little bit uh, cleaner to look at. So that's our data frame. You can see here the dates are a little bit cleaner. And I've just adjusted to two decimal places. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to define... Um, some support and resistance and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick to what Algo Vibes did in his video and we're just going to use uh, look for fractal highs and fractal lows as points of support and resistance now this is straight from Wikipedia but this is a, a bearish fractal or a fractal high so you can see higher high 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 highest high low low and then a bullish fractal or a, a fractal low as you can see like that so what we're going to do is just going to go through the chart and we're just going to find these points and these points so once again I'm just going to borrow straight from Algo Vibes videos here where I'm just going to bring in a column that says support and a column that says resistance and we're just going to say where the low is equal to the lowest low of the last five bars in the center okay if you want to see a little bit more about what this function does go and have a look at his video once again the description will be in the uh, sorry the link will be in the description but basically what we're saying is this function basically almost well it not almost it exactly just finds a fractal low as a support and a fractal high as a support so what we're just going to say is if it's a fractal low then print the low value if it's a fractal high print the high value so if we run that and then we just look at the data frame you can see here that this what I'll do is I'll just bring up the tail here um, probably only need 10 if we bring up the tail here you can see that this high which is this number here is higher than these two and higher than those two so that makes that a fractal high which we're going to count as a point of resistance so what I want to do now is I'm going to I want to plot these support and resistance points out but what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a parallel line from the fractal high points to the right of the chart and I'm going to draw a line from the fractal low points across the chart as well. Now to do this, I'm, I actually use full disclosure. I use chat GPT in this instance because it's just easy for me to get around this coding. Um, I could nut it out myself, but why not use a tool that makes your life a little bit easier? So let's bring in this code block. So here, just this first line here, I, I'll just make this 25 actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to this creates a new candlestick chart and then what we're going to do is we're going to look through each row of the data frame and if the number in the row is not zero meaning there is a line there which means it is a fractal low we're going to get plotly to draw a line 25 candles to the right of that of that candle that support and we're going to make that line green and we're going to do exactly the same thing for resistance so if the resistance column does not equal zero then we're going to draw a line uh, and we're going to make that red okay and then this will just get rid of that horrible rain slider um, you can copy this uh, code block out if you're coding along uh, and if we just run this you'll see here's our chart 
Now, the reason I like Plotly is this zoom function. So you can sort of zoom in here and, and see what's going on in a bit of detail. And you can hover over the candles to see the values. But you can see here that it, it's picked out each fractal top and fractal bottom. And it's just drawn a line of resistance across the chart. So that's effectively what Algo Vibes did. But I just was thinking about it and thought, oh, can I take this a little step further? What else can I do with this? Uh, and the next thing I wanted to do is, rather than have these lines of uh, support and resistance, I wanted to know if we were getting swing points. So I'm going to actually code up the swing points, i.e. higher highs, higher lows, lower highs, and lower lows. So this bit is a little bit tedious um, and probably not very efficient in terms of coding, but I just thought I'd do it simply so you can sort of see how we're stepping through it. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a new data frame and I'm just going to download uh, a fresh set of data. So here I'm just going to call this support and we're just going to download exactly the same data as we had here. Uh, they're sort of kind of separate projects which is why I'm just sort of restarting it. Um, I'm going to just round it off and tidy it up as we did before. Now this next line of code I'm also just borrowing straight from Algo Vibes video, but effectively what we're doing is we're just taking this data frame that we that we made and we just want to filter it down so that we only see the fractal lows. Okay, so if we run that and then bring up the current data frame as it sits, these are all the fractal lows that we got um, that we that we've got basis our, our little formula here. So I'll just get rid of this. Uh, what I wanted to do next is I want to know out of those lows uh, if we've got a higher low or a lower low compared to the previous fractal low. So I've just brought in this next line of code and I'm just going to make a new column in this data frame called swing. And basically we're just going to say that if the low of the current line is lower than the low of the line previously, we're just going to mark it as a lower low. Otherwise, it's a higher low. So if we just bring up support again, you can see here that we've got a higher low. This low is higher, it's higher, it's higher, then all of a sudden it's lower. So we're marking off the swings as either higher lows or lower lows. And now we'll get a little bit tedious again. I know that the purists are probably tut tutting. But what I need to do now is do the same thing but for the resistances. So I'm just going to run through the same steps. I'm going to make a new data frame called res for resistances. And I'm just going to make it for the start of this year. So it's exactly the same as this. In fact, these next two steps are also going to be the same. So if I just run this cell, which is yeah, it's exactly the same as, as this stuff, but we've just, instead of using the low, we're using the high. And instead of using the min, we're using the max. And of course, we're using higher highs and lower highs. So we just run that as well. And then we'll have exactly the same sort of data frame except with higher highs and lower highs in it. So the next thing we need to do is put those together side by side and so I'm going to do that in a fresh data frame and I'm just going to call it temp for temporary. Um, so I'll bring in this code and I'm just going to use the concat function and I'm just going to put together these two data frames into one. So when we bring that up then we have our fresh data frame that's got all the highs, high highs, higher lows, and lower lows, lower highs in it. So next, we continue with the tedium, and we're going to create yet another new data frame, which I'm going to call DF2. So this is just a rinse and repeat of the steps we've already done over and over. So once that's downloaded, now what I want to do is I want to take this temp DF, and I want to take the swing column out of the temporary um, data frame and I want to insert all those values into DF2 so that we know where the swing points are and if they are higher swing points or lower swing points. So to do that we're just going to merge swing column from supports and resistances into DF2 based on the corresponding dates. So we're just going to merge the swing column left index true, right index true, how? On the left. So if we just go DF2 Okay, so now we can see we've got our nice plain data data frame here, but we've got the swing, the value, not so much the value of the swing, because we know that this is a swing high, but what we now know is that this was higher than the last swing high. 
So now what I want to do is plot that out. And once again, I use chat GPT to come up with this code. But effectively, it does more or less the same sort of thing as we did last time. So we're just creating a new chart, a candlestick chart. And then we're just going to go through each of the rows in the in the data frame. And basically, we're going to say um, that for each time there's there's a an entry, so a lower low or high low, we're going to put the entry 50 points below the low of the candle and if it's a higher high we're going to put it 50 points above the high okay and then we're going to put the text of the swing column as the annotation okay so if we just run that i know it sounds like a mouthful and this looks a little bit complicated but if we just run this you can see what we come up with here right so we can zoom in and we can see we've got a high 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 low high 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 low high 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 low etc etc so that sort of just plots that out you might get a few instances like this where the candle is both a higher high and a higher low not sure exactly how to deal with that yet um, but you will find it a little bit through some charts however the general premise I think is okay so just finally what I thought about doing um, is I wanted to just put a zigzag line in here so basically I just wanted to connect all the higher uh, all the, the swing points together and what I wanted to do is if it was a swing up make the line green or if it's a swing down make the line red so to do this it's effectively just building on the same block of code we used to make the chart in the first place but all it's doing differently is it's getting the current price or the current um, value and then it's com comparing it to the next value and just assigning those. And if the next value is higher, then it's going to use a green line. And if it's lower, it's going to use a red line. And then we're basically then going to just connect all the highs and lows together. So um, let's just run this and you'll see what I mean. So it's once again, it's the same chart. It's just basically got there's part of some of the problems that you might experience where you've got a high low and a high like you've got two fractals within the one candle but generally speaking you can see here that these are just sort of connecting up so it is quite visual but I think the point is of all this at, at this stage at the end of the video is that now what we've been able to do is quantify and and tell the code exactly where we think the supports and resistances and where the swing points are so once you can code it and quantify it like that then you've got a foundation to start building something where you might um, look to build a, a trading system off and start to do something where you could run a back test so for instance you know you might want to say well if we get a higher high and a, high, a, a higher low that you might want to buy the break of the previous high high something like that I mean that however you want the, the sequences of high, of swings to, to work out for you to initiate a trade well the fact that the code knows what it is now means that you've got something that you can build off something that's mechanical and defined and because of that you can use it to write a trading program so in terms of doing that it, it just depends how much traction I get off this video if there's enough interest and I get some sort of response well maybe I'll go ahead then and just start doing a simple back test on, on how you use this information to begin to craft a, a trading system um, so look I hope that gave you a bit of food for thought I was just inspired by Algo Vibes videos to just go ahead and do a little bit more and if you want to do a little bit more on top of this then that would be awesome um, so yeah thanks for watching and um, maybe I'll see you in the future bye for now